In this tutorial, we're going to go over the objects in Game Maker Studio 2. I've opened up a sample game so that we can look at the pre-populated sprites and objects that are in this game. So I'm going to start here on our right side. We're going to come to objects. If we're going to create a new object, you can right click on the objects just like you would do with the sprites. And from here you could create, you could open all, add existing sprites from somewhere, add existing sprites from your library. Again, you can add a group just like you did with a sprite so you can organize your objects. You can collapse all of the objects in case you have them all open and you can open them in the Explorer. Now we already have objects in this, so I'm just going to click on the arrow to expand them out. And I'm going to open this obj underscore tank gray, and you're going to notice in all of these tutorials that I name my things, the first three letters of the name indicate what it is. So for instance, object would be obj, a sprite would be spr, a script would be scr. So when we open this, we have two windows open because we already have code in this object. So we look up here, this is the name of the object. Right here is the sprite that we're using for this object and the size of that sprite. This icon here will allow you to assign a new sprite to this object. Just to the right of that, we can edit the sprite or edit the image. Now, this is going to take us to the first window of the sprites, if you've watched that tutorial. So when we click on that, just below here, you'll be able to change all the parameters for the sprite itself. If we click on this, this takes us to the image editor of the sprite so that we can actually modify the image. And this we can click on these three dots here and we can select a sprite to use for the object if we already have them in our game. And just below that we can set the collision masks. So for instance, by default it's same as sprite, but we, if we have another collision mask that we want to assign to it, we can choose that there. Here we can edit the mask, so when we click that it brings us back to the sprite window. We can change the collision mask to whatever we want. Down here we have four checkboxes. The first checkbox is the visible checkbox, which just means can we see the object when it's in the room. Now we would use this, for instance, if we wanted to place something in the room that just ran code, for instance, or maybe we want to place something in the room and later on make it visible, so turn it on and off, we could do that with that checkbox. The solid checkbox performs very basic collision detection inside of GameMaker, so essentially what it does is when it collides with something, it moves it back to the position just before it collides with that object before it'll actually run code. So this sometimes will help with collisions with objects. Sometimes you have to add more things in code, and we'll go over that later when we get into coding our games. The persistence box allows us to take an object, once we put it into our game, the object will retain settings throughout the game. So for instance, if we had a player, let's say, and our player had a health of 10 in the first room, and uh, the player gets hurt and the health goes down to 7, when it goes to a new room, that health is going to maintain that 7 until they get hurt again or until they increase their health, rather than each room resetting that health. Now in that persistent setting, the create event will not run a second time. It'll only run when the object's created. So if you destroy the object and reinstate the object, then the create will run. 
Under the use physics, we're going to go over that in a different tutorial. That allows us to do a lot of things in our game to simulate physics and um, there's a lot of settings and, and things that can be done with that that we'll go over. Events are what trigger actions. So for instance, when a player goes outside of the room, that's the trigger, and the action is what happens. So when the player, or when the tank in this case, goes outside of the room, his health, the HP, is set to zero. So we use events and actions inside of GameMaker all the time. This is basically the actions where your code goes, the events here are what trigger these actions. There are a couple of events that are important enough to go over right now, and the rest of the events we'll go over later in future tutorials. The two that I want to go over in this tutorial is the create event and the step event. The create event is what happens when the object is created. So for instance, if we put this tank inside of the room, when the room starts and the tank is created, this code will run. It will only run once unless we destroy the object and recreate the object. So all of this code is only run once, and then the rest of these events are run each frame of the game to see if they actually occur. So the step event, the step event actually happens every single frame of the game. And this is based on room speed, and we'll go over that when we get to rooms. But just think of the step event as, as checking it all the time, as a continuous check. And so this code will run each frame of the game. Now the parent allows different objects to share code. Uh, they can share actions, they can share events with the parent, and um, basically it gives us a way to optimize our code so that we don't have to have a lot of different lines of code for the same thing. You don't have to use parents. You can do pretty much everything that you can do inside of a parent object inside of just regular code. It just re would require many more lines. An example of this is, is we had uh, several different types of weapons and the weapons shot like arrows, bullets, lasers, things like that, we could group all of those with a parent and the parent would have the code for making the health of the player go down when it was shot by one of these things instead of having a collision for the arrow, a collision for the bullet, a collision for the layer, we could actually just have a collision for the parent and it would reduce the health of the player. We'll look at that later when we get into our code and we'll look at optimizing the code to make the game run better, faster, and to be more organized as we're coding. And then the last thing here is the physics. And again, we'll look at that in a future tutorial to see how all of these things work inside of GameMaker. Maker. <laughs>